Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Dragon 70 in the five minute pool on ICC. This is Grandmaster Melik Kachian, and I'm playing B3 on move one. See if you can figure out why. No hints. <laughs> All right, so we're playing the Nimzo Larson. I've been experimenting today and it's gone well so far, so let's bring the bishop out here. Yeah, bishop d7. I'm going to try to take over the center and play d4. Advance in the middle of the board. I might bring this bishop back. Okay, so here I could take, but they're going to take and have pressure on g2. So, hmm, where to, where to drop the bishop back to? Probably e2. I fear on d3 that black might push the e-pawn with tempo at some stage, so I'm going to try to keep it back. Now, Melik's a friend of mine. I've known him for several years. We teach at the same camp in Arizona every summer, which is um, it's called the Western Invitational Chess Camp, and it's a, it's a blast. And Melik's a really good guy to work with, really funny guy, just a very jovial grandmaster, I would describe him as. Lives in California, I think in Glendale, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's castle here. I might try to prop my knight up on e5. I'm thinking about doing this. Do I do it right now or play knight bd2 first? Let's play it right now. I just want to see how he reacts. So, okay, he's not going to take it. I could take the light square bishop, but I think it's better to keep my knight on e5. I went through the pain of establishing it there, so I'll try to maintain it for now. I might go f4 even to prop it up further. I wouldn't be surprised to see black play their knight into e4 as well. They could do that if they wanted to try to establish a counterweight. Rook e8, logical. Good move, I think. Hmm. I want to put my bishop on d3 and then have a pawn on a3. But let's go f4. Again, trying to further support this. Because the reason why I say pawn on a3 is I want to rule out knight b4. And I also want to get my bishop up here so I can play queen f3, for instance. I just don't know if I'll get that opportunity. Okay, bishop there. Interesting. Now, do I go all in and play g4? That could create some fireworks. I kind of want to do it, though, because it looks, it looks like the thing to do here. All right, you only live once. Let's do it. So kick the bishop. Otherwise, I think Black's intention was to try to grab control over the e4 square and push me around. So I'm, I'm trying to prevent this plan. Now, probably they'll bring the bishop back to either e6 or d7, maybe even c8. I don't think they want to go bishop e4 because I could play g5 then and kick away the knight from defending the bishop. And as soon as I said that, of course, Black played that move. <laughs> so what to do now? Do I put my money where my mouth is? I'm thinking take, take, and then bishop up to c4. That was my original intention. Yeah, I got to kick this knight away. I think that's imperative. Could I do something truly interesting here? So if knight d7, what about knight takes f7? And then king takes, knight takes e4, pawn takes, bishop check. That looks cool. And then if king f8, I can play queen h5. I'm threatening... Queen f7 mate. I'm also threatening h7. Hard to parry. But he can maybe respond with a capture on e5. So maybe I can't do that quite yet. Or sorry, I'm thinking if knight takes e4 first. So if knight e7, knight takes e4. But if I take on f7 first, he can't do that. That might just work. Okay, so knight takes f7, king takes f7, knight takes e4, pawn takes, bishop c4, check. He could run to g6. Looks kind of suicidal, though. I mean, queen f5, threatening f5. Okay, I'm going to go for it. You'll never know unless you dare, right? Fortune favors the brave. But I think that's a crucial line. Take, bishop check, king g6. And I can drag his, drag his king out even further with f5, but he's going to take on g5. But then I have check on c1, king back to f6, queen h5. Ay ay ay, it's a lot to calculate for both sides. My gut tells me he's got to be close to losing there. His king is so precarious. Yeah, he didn't even take it, because he saw bishop c4 was going to be rough. 
All right, so knight to g3 or maybe knight f2 trying to go into the g4 square. Hmm. I don't want to just leave my knight on that current square. He's going to pull his king back very soon. Let's pull the knight here. And I feel like it has more of a future going to like g4 instead of sitting on g3. Because if I put it on g3, he can play the pawn to g6, and I'm going to have a hard time doing much. Okay, I'm not worried about the threat on this pawn. It's almost irrelevant at the moment, because I could just pin him. Bishop f3 is tempting, but then he might actually take. I could give a check, try to draw that pawn forward. I could also play knight d3 and just send my knight into e5. Or knight g4 for that matter. Hmm. Not quite sure. Okay, I'm going to do this move. Put the bishop on a better diagonal. I mean, I think he's going to have to waste some time on a move like king. G8. Maybe I can go queen f3. Yeah, let's do this. Knight b4. It's a possibility for him. Although, actually, I could play a3. Knight takes d3. Queen takes d5. Check then. Pick up another pawn. So how does he defend this guy? I mean, I'm loving my position. I've got the two bishops and an extra pawn. But black is fighting. Time situation also in my favor. Hmm, that move I did not see. Does it work? Maybe. So he's attacking d4 and f4. Queen h5, nah. I mean, queen takes d5 is obviously the first move we're going to look at, but he's going to take on f4 with this bishop. Hmm. Not quite sure. I can play knight h3, but that just looks awkward. How do I punish this? Queen takes d5, bishop takes f4. Bishop c4, queen takes g5. Amazingly, I don't see anything there. Okay, I'm going to do this just out of convenience. I really wasn't sure what to do if taking on d5 was acceptable. Not a move I would have liked to play. I would have preferred my knight to go into the e5 square or something. Nevertheless, the threat remains on d5. If necessary, I could see c3 being playable. Okay, he's going to take that. Okay, so if take, take, check, my king is fairly open. But you know what? Yeah, let's do this. He's got to play the knight back. And then I have to be aware that bishop c5 check is a threat. So let's get our king out of the way. Just so bishop c5 isn't taking us completely by surprise. I want to attack this pawn, if possible. So I can do that now with queen e4 or something to that effect. Yeah, queen e4. Hmm. Let's bring this back. He's going to go knight d4 then. Okay, we're going to do this. I know he's going to play knight f8, but had to make a decision. Okay, so now we're going to bring this back. Let's line up against his queen. Time is becoming a big factor now. Uh, let's reroute this. And I just dropped that pawn. Okay. <laughs> Can he take here too? Yikes. I'm really playing this poorly. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to go knight g5 next. This is my plan. <laughs> my brilliant plan. Queen over to h3. Rook takes f8, maybe? Oh, he found a defense. Nice. Oh, this game was going so well, and all of a sudden it's in doubt. Let's line up here. I'm going to try to open up bishop takes g6 if I can. Ooh, we got it. 
And we stopped Rook H5 in the process. <laughs> that was such a sloppy game at the end. I win, but I the way I played the second half of that game, I didn't deserve to win that. <laughs> Not in the slightest. So we had a, a nice sacrifice with Knight takes F7, which I'm glad I spotted a couple moves back. But sometimes I do this. Instead of playing like natural and quick moves, I, I try to find like the best way to capitalize on a advantage and I get myself into problems, oftentimes with the clock or uh, even on the board. I like almost create problems for myself. Yeah, he said <laughs> he said tricky in the chat. So I think Black's trouble maybe started right around here when I have this knight posted. I'm not sure Bishop F5 was a good move. They might need something more sophisticated here to try to neutralize my knight on e5. That's the big problem, this posted up knight. I think for me, right here, maybe after knight e6, I bet I have something stronger if I think about this more. Queen takes d5 is the move I wanted to play, but bishop takes f4, and I didn't see how to exploit that pin on the knight on e6. It's got to be a way. I just... Couldn't figure it out. As played, maybe maybe here instead of bishop takes d4, maybe I should keep my bishop pair and play queen takes d5 instead with the pin. Here, I can't play f5 because of bishop c5 check with the discovery on the queen. Even still, I feel like there might be something. Wasted some time with queen e4, queen f3. Yeah, knight f2 was a straight blunder. I just missed that he could take the f4 pawn. And then I went into all-out attack mode and somehow whipped up a <laughs> mating net, although he kind of self-mated him. So let's go back and have a look. So I felt like playing the Nimzo Larson. I have a pretty good record with this move online so far. Over the board, I don't have a good record with B3. I think I've only played it twice, and I maybe have like half out of two or something. Maybe worse than that. No, I, I've lost at least two games with B3, so it could be, could be O out of two or half out of three. So this occurred, and I think it's helpful to play bishop b5, even though my bishop does retreat, because I at least force black to adopt kind of a more passive setup with bishop d7. As soon as he plays bishop d7, I don't really want to take and just allow him to recapture and hit g2, but again, I've had to make him go through the paces and play a couple moves that maybe he didn't exactly want to play. So this occurred, and then d5. Okay, so let's see right around here. Because I have a feeling if black's worse, it's only slightly. But I, th I think they can neutralize my play. Rook e8 itself didn't look so bad. And then f4. And here's where we went bishop f5, which was encouraging me to play g4, waving the red flag in front of the bull. The engine says it's all right, though. I wonder if something like this is playable. Trying to attack d2, which is... Uh, my knight is guarding the e4 square. He'd love to plunk his knight in on e4 unopposed. Because if he, he could do this and then like bring the bishop back, let's say. Now this bishop is bad. Although the main problem remains for black, this knight hanging over their position. So bishop f5, g4, bishop e4. Okay, so that, that move's really asking for it. That's just bad. Yeah, here I, I thought they would retreat, and in fact, the computer does say bishop back to c8. I mentioned that this might be a possibility, because on e6 or d7, the bishop is going to be either a target, as in the case of e6, like it allows me to play f5, or on d7, it's kind of in the way of black's coordination. But on c8, the only downside of this square is that it's blocking the rook from reaching uh, the center. But otherwise, it's out of the way. And if I continue g5, yeah, knight d7, here this isn't going to work because there's a pawn on d5. I don't have bishop c4 check. So black might need that. Yeah, as played, they're in trouble. d7 is the only safe square for the knight. Yep, and knight takes f7 is working. Um, I think I mentioned that there's this move order too, but I think that's less accurate because they can actually take e5 and get rid of the piece that's going to take on f7. Yep, now black can't take, it looks like. So if take, check, and only two squares for the king, f8 or g6, and apparently they both lead to force mate. So here I was going to play queen h5, and I'm just coming in. Yeah, it's mate in two. Black can't even stave off mate for very long. If g6, queen h6 is checkmate, 
nice crisscross mate right there. So, yeah, if king g6, I just assumed there was a force mate. Okay, let's try to calculate this. So the, the computer's saying force mate in 7 with f5. Let's try to figure out why that's the case. So f5 check, king takes g5 forced. I think it's probably bishop c1 check. And then I really doubt king h4 is going to survive long for black. So let's say king back to f6. And then that's the position I was wondering about. I was thinking queen h5. It's a quiet move. It's not a check, but it threatens queen f7 mate, queen g5 mate, or bishop g5 mate. And I have a hard time believing black can stop all of that. I mean, the only move I can see that he can play at that point is knight takes d4, trying to give his king the flight square on e5. But I think then it's mate in two. Queen g5 check, king e5, bishop f4 mate. Black's king is mated in the middle. So let's see if that's the case. f5 check, take. Yeah, bishop c1. Okay, the engine says throw an e3 because that's going to slow him down for one move. But mainly I was looking at this. Yeah, now queen h5. Not a forcing move, but if you're calculating, this is a move you'd want to look at because it's the next best thing to a forcing move. It threatens mate in one like several different ways. So as I was describing, these three checkmates. And again, e3 could just be thrown in as a, a, a way to stave off mate for another move. But yeah, it's going to be checkmate like very soon. Black's king is just getting driven forward. So the line I was calculating just a moment ago was knight takes d4, queen g5, king here, and bishop f4 checkmate. Looks like some sort of like Giancho Greco problem. <laughs> Composition. So clearly he can't take the knight. We just established that. Well, the computer established it as well. But yeah, taking the knight is just going to lead the mate after this, whether the king goes to f8 or g6. So he played on down a pawn. And like I said, I, I got to work on this. I um, I have a winning position, but I tried to play it maybe too safe. I was perhaps giving my opponent's position too much credit. Okay, so how could I have improved here? The engine wants to play knight d3. Yeah, that looks like a good move. Just send the knight into e5 right away. I was thinking I could hold off on that move for some reason, but I don't see any reason to... Prolong it. Yeah, once the knight lands on e5, it's deja vu for black. <laughs> Another knight on e5 they have to deal with. Yeah, even this is apparently okay. Queen h5 was strong here. And what if g6? Sacrifice. Knight g7 and then bring the, the cavalry up. Threatening checks here or here. This does look pretty nasty. And I have three pawns for the piece as well. I'm not even down anything. Yeah, that's pretty bad. What if queen h5, knight f8? f5, start bowling him over with our pawns? Okay. Yeah, these are more direct continuations, all of these lines. I waffled for a little bit. Still good for white, even around here. Queen e4. Maybe I shouldn't be too hard on myself. I mean, right here I just blundered the f-pawn with 30-some seconds. But I, I would just like to avoid situations where it even gets this close. Hmm, g6 was good, according to the computer. <laughs> yeah, my thinking was if he took with the knight, I would play knight g5, and I've got pressure on g6 and also the h7 pawn. And even though I'm down two pawns now, black's feeling the heat around their king. This is also good for me. Queen h3. Okay, what did I miss? Ooh, that would have been a really nice shot. Bishop takes g6. Yeah, I didn't see that whatsoever. Wow. So if take, then I can come in here with check. Removal of the knight on f8. And, oh, well, Larson would be proud that his saying is potentially in use in this game. Knight on f8, there is no mate. So queen takes g6, and white is winning. Rook takes f6 is in the air. Black is helpless, according to the computer. Yeah, to stop this sacrifice, check. If the king runs, I could always check and go pick up the queen. Or just mate him next move. Aha, uh -huh, wow. Bishop takes g6. Because in the time pressure, it felt like my position was falling apart here. And I was already berating myself for having messed up a winning position. But <laughs> chess just never fails to surprise you. That's what I love about this game. It's just always something around the corner.
And analyzing with computers, you find really cool defensive resources and tactical resources and offensive resources and positions. So what if he takes this way? I could play bishop f7 and win his queen, but there's probably something better. Rook takes f8. Yeah, rook takes f8. He's got to win here. Yeah, that's mate, according to the computer. If rook takes queen h7, and if king takes, I was assuming just check and, yeah, run the king out. We can always just take a pit stop and pick up their queen and win the game. But I played the knight back to e4, after which it's anybody's game. I was just able to somehow coordinate... Again, this should not have worked. Yeah, rook e5 was just an unfortunate move. Rook e3 hitting the queen is very good. And this time black is winning, had this been played. And then Melek just blanked on queen h7. Could play bishop h6, block the mate. 10 seconds versus 10 seconds. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I guess I could play knight g4 and try to continue with something. But the far more interesting stage of the game has passed. Let's put it that way. Well, that was fun. Yeah, I got to play B3 more often. And this session today, I played three openings that I never play. Uh, the Trumpowski, the French Defense, and the Larson. And if you haven't watched the other two videos, I won't spoil them. But um, I, I got to say that I think experimenting in the opening is a good way to inject some creativity into your game. So I would highly recommend doing that from time to time. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll be back again soon with another one. Talk to you guys later. Bye.